everyone. Um, I just made this card yesterday and I've had lots of interest in it and a few people asking if I will do a video tutorial so I thought I would do one for you today. It's really quite an easy card to make and it's using the High Tide set which is in the Occasions catalogue. That's the set here and it's really great fun to make scenes of all different times of the day. My card is actually one of night time and I was trying to make an impending storm. So let's get on with it. It's really, as I said, quite quick and easy. To start off with, we need to make a mask. And so I just stamped the image on a piece of note paper because I didn't have a post-it note quite large enough. And then I just used the wonderful, I'm afraid, retired stamping up to a glue pen uh, just to put a little bit of glue on the back of the image that I cut out and that makes it a little bit tacky so we can then go right ahead and get on with our, our card making. I've also used that same paper as a mask that I've just torn where I want the mountains and the sky, the big clouds in the sky to be. As I said this image will stick quite nicely to a new piece of card. So here we have it and I did get started because I didn't want to spend so much time doing the sponging. The colours I've used are Daffodil Delight, that's this one, Sweet Sugar Plum, Mariner Mist, Perfect Plum, Cajun Craig, uh, Craze, <laughs> I'm a Craig, <laughs> uh, a bit crazy actually, and Night of Navy plus Memento Black. And I've also used another sheet of this note paper as a mask. So it doesn't cost much. To get started, we're just going to lie our mask down. This is one that I prepared earlier. And then place another sheet of the paper over the top to get the sponging done. So I started with the yellow. Just smoosh, smooch the sponge into the yellow and then just gently sponging it on. Just make sure you don't get the little tip of that light house turned over. And I'm going to work through the colours. So next we do the Sweet Sugar Plum. I've already done quite a bit of this so I only have to touch it up. Oh, that's a bit wet that one so I've got to be a little bit careful with putting too much on there. And notice I am working on one of our stamping mats or our paper piercing mats. That's because the stamps are photopolymer. Next we're going to go to Mariner Mist. And this is where we'll start adding extras to the, to the scene. So just... You can see I'm using all different techniques for actually putting this on. Sometimes I'm going in circles, sometimes just sticking to swiping, going that way. And it just really depends on what you want to get out of your out of your um, shapes that you or your sky that you're putting on there. Um, now it doesn't look like we're getting much happening here but it will build up I can assure you and it doesn't take too long and you'll see that as we move along. I just like to close my ink pads up all the time it helps with the longevity of them. Next we're going to Perfect Plum and I am always envisaging what I'm going to see so I I keep looking and thinking yes I'd like that a little bit darker like that a little bit lighter um, and so on you'll notice that the plum does tend to neutralize some of the other colors so that's something to keep in mind when you're actually working with it and that's where I'm going to leave that for now you'll see when I take this away that I've got quite a, a solid line there which will be my horizon. So for the horizon 
I'm going to use the stamp that I haven't got over here. Great. Um, here we go. It's the, the water stamp. So I'm going to need to ink that up first of all with Mariner Mist. And notice I have kept the mask there so that I can stamp right over the top of that if I wish. And just stamp it so that it's forming a bit of an idea of the water. Might give it one more little bit down here. And then I also did that same piece with the Knight of Navy. So I'm just going to clean my stamp on the stamp and scrub. Best tool that we've got, I think. Come with the Knight of Navy. And oops. Oh, now I'm covered in Knight of Navy. Wonderful. That's what happens when you rush. You can turn this stamp upside down if you wish. Um, and just make it so that it does exactly what you want it to do. Just going to clean myself on the stamp and scrub for a moment because I managed to get ink all over my hand when I dropped that last stamp. You can see as we move along that the images are starting to really take shape. Next I'm going to put the, the sandy piece in and for that I'm going to use again the Daffodil Yellow or Daffodil Delight. I don't know why I keep calling it Daffodil Yellow. Just ink it up. It doesn't have to be perfect this which is something that I really do like and I'm going to end up with a bit of yellow in my ocean there because I came down a bit too far but that's okay as well. I think the thing I like about this is that you can do just exactly what you feel like and make it work for you. Then we're going to go to the Cajun Craze. One of my favorite colors from Stamping Up. It's a really beautiful deep color that has lots of underlying color in it I think. So this one I'm actually going to stamp off on my paper because I don't want it too dark. The first time, the second time I'm going to just do it with um, a little more roughness. There we go. I'm getting there now. Now you might say, oh, you don't usually have Cajun craze in your water, but I've got a little trick to show you for that too. If you make a little mistake like I did just there by putting the water down too far, this is where I use my aqua painter, and I love my aqua painter. I'll pull it out to use for lots and lots of different cards. So if you just blend that a little bit with your aqua painter, that'll start to take that away and later on we can give that a little bit more of a um, little bit more of a, a definite edge to the landscape there. I should have actually used a mask on there. Next thing though we're going to do is our um, lighthouse. You can see by having the mask I've got a nice white area to do that. Now I was a little bit unsure of what to do with this one and which one to do first but I decided to do the basic shape first and I used Soft Suede, another one of my favourites. I guess I'm a bit of an earth girl that's why I like those shapes. I forgot to tell you when I cut this little um, mask out it's really a good idea to cut it just inside the outline there and that way you'll find that when you come to stamp that you won't have that little white area around the outside like you often do 
when you stamp on a mask. Oh, well, I have because I got it a bit crooked. But never mind, I'll be able to fix that up with the detailed image that I'm going to stamp in Knight of Navy. I prefer to use Knight of Navy rather than black in night scenes in particular because I find that they that it just has a little bit of depth of colour that's really, really nice. I'm going to pull this down a little bit towards my, me because I like to get right over the top of this while I'm doing it and it's a bit hard to see. So I hopefully you can still see what I'm doing here and just make sure that that goes over the top. Oh, terrible. Always the way, isn't it? When you're trying to show people how to do things, you make an awful mess of them. And in fact, I obviously didn't stamp that down hard enough because I haven't got half of that image there. I'll just give it a bit of a push. That's better. Another good thing about this is, again, if because I've gone a little over some edges, get your aqua painter, and I just wanted to drag a little bit of that colour down so that I didn't have any pure white in this one because it's a night scene as far as I'm concerned and I want it to stay looking quite night-like. <laughs> um, right, I did actually, on the original card, put a stamp of the yellow beam going across but I'm not going to do that with this one just yet so we'll work on that shortly. Um, just before we do that I'm going to mask this down and get some more solid Cajun on it so that you can get the idea of much more solid ground here. Now we've got the watery looking stamp there but I think we can manage to to camouflage that a little later on. Okay let's get on to the clouds. Now the clouds um, I was looking for billowy clouds and clouds are funny things because normally you mask the opposite parts so that's the sort of look I want so that means I really need to turn that mask over and do it this way and I'm going to start with the um, perfect plum get my perfect plum sponge there and just I normally always start on the actual paper or on the stamping mat and that's because if you've got any really solid bits of ink coming up then they tend to go on the paper rather than on your piece of work. So that's my first one. You can see how that's starting to look like much more of a cloud. So I'm going to try and get another little cloud happening down here. So I'm just going to do this a little bit lighter. And you can see there's more clouds happening there. And I think I need to even go down one more as well. It's just a matter of getting these clouds to look like you want them. You can tear your paper exactly as you want it to be. Um, and therefore get more of the cloud idea happening. Now to make those clouds even darker, I um, am going to go to Night of Navy and eventually to black. As I said, I don't like using black that much on any of my artwork, but that's simply because I find black is a bit of a killing color. And um, this time we're gonna start up the top here and try and blend this a little bit more into our clouds. And you can see here we're getting, oops, a little bit more of our 
shapes that we want. So you can just see by moving those shapes over that you will get a more of a, a scene that, that's the type of thing that you're after. So next thing we're going to do is put our little um, headland in and I'm going to just tear a little headland. Now remember this part time I've got to tear the reverse of what I want. Um, so this is going to be a slightly bigger headland than there we go, than what I had before. And again, I'm going to go in with the Cajun and the Knight of Navy. So, oops, we'll just put a little mask down here as well over the water because we don't want that to go on the water. I'm going to be trimming this off so I don't mind that I've got a few little bits and pieces hanging over the edges and I think if you if you limit yourself to being too restricted then you will actually end up with a very restricted looking piece of craft work and you don't really want that so there's the navy over the top quite easy oops I just didn't do that quite high enough um, There we go. Now looking at that I can see that I need to put in some um, pink, some of the sweet sugar plum into the water and that's there to act as a redirection. Oh dear, which one did I put in the wrong one? I think that must be the blue. <laughs> this happens sometimes when you've got lots of different bits of colour going at the one time. So here we have the, the reflection of the light on the water and I could actually incorporate my mask there again to make sure I don't mess that up too much. Back you come. And one other thing I did was I wanted to make it look like it was raining a little bit. So you get quite a wet sponge then and just drag it down in the direction that you want those lines to be and that gives you your weathery look. Okay, so now we're going to go with fixing up the, the bottom bit here and for that I used the Cajun as a sponge down the bottom to keep it nice and light and a little bit of the extra yellow as well. And I also put quite a bit of navy, but before I did that with the sponging, I stamped in the Cajun and the navy with the little tiny reed stamp. So we'll just do that now. And you stamp it all different ways. as well. Better clean it off I suppose, teach you all good habits. Sometimes I'm a bit naughty and I just go, if it's a light colour into a dark colour, I just do that without cleaning it and it's really not a good habit to get into. I also used um, a sponge with the 
a little bit of the navy on it to darken around the, the top here of the actual headland that the um, the, the lighthouse is sitting on. Oh, I'm hope sorry, guys. I'm very right brained, and I, when I'm working, I don't often speak very well. Um, but you can see now we're actually building up a presence of some real depth into the work and this is what I love so take that away we've got our water happening but I also want to darken that water a little bit closer in because that's just again the night of navy going on there and it's just like doing a painting you can just work it as you go and you can feel what's happening and it's really really nice I, I just love this sort of work it's Fantastic. So, I think now we're up to actually doing our, um, our little birdies. And I did those in the Memento Black because I wanted them to be a silhouette. And I do like the Memento Black. It's nice and black. Um, I did find in the first one that I did that I felt that the little birds were a little out of proportion to the, the size of the lighthouse. So I have tried to make them a little further forward in this one. We press nice and firmly, give it a moment to transfer. And there we have our little birdies with their silhouette happening. So we're pretty well on the way to being finished now. So take that off. And what you need to do, what's one of my favorite things to do is to actually squint at what I've been working with. And I just see where I think I need some more light, where I need probably to put some more yellow back into the work. Um, and of course the yellow can only go on top of the light areas. But I'm going to head back with a little bit more yellow into the the foreground. Oh, that's not the right one. And you can see as I'm doing that that it does just bring up a little bit of colour there. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow into the sea there. And a little bit more over the headland there. Of course, when we add yellow over blue, it makes green, doesn't it? But that's all right. Love a bit of green. Now, I do want to add a little bit more darkness to this lighthouse. So I'm going to use my Aqua Painter and my Cajun. Because when I squint at this, I'm finding that i am got lots of Cajun here, a little bit there, but nothing going up into the actual body of the design so I'm just going to add a little bit here and there a bit over there and I think that'll do it oops didn't mean to do that and now, to finish it off, I'm going to actually do something that I don't often do, and that is sponge with black. So I'm going to get my memento, it's nice and dark, and starting again off the edge, we're going to go all the way around. And forgive me for not talking while I'm actually concentrating. Don't want to mess this up totally for you. And you can see how dirty the stamping mat is getting. Don't worry about that because that just will wash up off very easily under, under tap water with a little bit of a, a rub from a cloth. I use mine all the time as a base for my stamping because they are absolutely great. Um, 
I can see now that I do need a little more. That's all good. A little more of the perfect plum up in those. Oh, the pink might do up in here. Yes, that just gives that a little bit more depth of colour. Okay, so that's pretty much our our finished area but I've just noticed something here you can see the white shape I don't like seeing that so again I'm going to get my Knight of Navy um, and my aqua painter and just put in a little bit of color there it hardly shows at all on the area but it does just camouflage that white if you've been a bit naughty like me and um, or a bit lazy like me and stamping a little bit in a rush. So next thing we're going to do is just wait for it to dry because the image is actually the the greeting I mean is actually done with white embossing powder so it's a really good idea to have all of your paper dry this has soaked up a fair amount of ink you can see from the back not only is that off the stamping mat but the ink has soaked into some parts of it and that's fine um, it all comes and looks beautiful once you've got it matted up I would then, because of the dark outline, I would mat it up onto the white and then the black again. Or I could go to give a lighter look, the um, maybe the, the navy cardstock or even the perfect plum, something like that. I think you'll find it will be a personal decision, whatever you do. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, if you want more information, I hope this will be enough, but you can go to my blog and see the blog post. Um, and my blog is oh, will be up at the end of this video. Thanks for looking and see you next time. Bye.